It may get a little crazy, but it's a whole lot of fun. little bit uh, silly last week but just let me tell you it probably won't get any better this week <laughs> I'm getting more relaxed with this Sunday in the studio and the more relaxed I get the more of me you get which could or could not be beneficial to your life <laughs> now my question to you this week is does size really matter mm, I know we could really go deep with this one and this question has arisen because, hello, look what I have, brand new, beautiful, oh my gosh, oh, jelly plate, brand spanking new. It is 12 by 14 inch and I am in love. I just want to roll on it down <laughs> I do. Look how clean it is. It's so magnificent. I have had an 8x10 gel plate for uh, lot, six years, like a long time. And it was fine because when I first started printing on the gel plate, I was using a lot of copy paper and um, craft paper and, you know, cardstock. But these days I tend to use more rice paper and white tissue. And I was finding that the edge around it was annoying me because I was wasting a lot. So I had to upgrade to a bigger and more beautiful plate. And oh my gosh, I can't believe it took me so long. <laughs> now I'm in love with my new gel plate. But, but, oh my gosh, the best thing that happened this week was, oh, the new stencils arrive from PM Artist Studio. And let me ask you that question. Does size really matter? The short version is, heck, yes, it does. <laughs> and the bigger, the better. <laughs> so that's what I got this week. That's what I did have. I mean, it's beautiful. It's a lovely design. But hello. Oh, look at this one. Oh, my gosh. Yes. The bigger, more beautiful, amazing size came this week. And, we, you know, we have to play with this now, right? New gel plate, new stencil. Oh, my life is complete. But I also have da -da -da -da, this one, the swirly, swirly one in the bigger size. <gasps> Look, that was the other side, which was nice. It's, a, again, fabulous design. But, oh, look at the bigger size. <laughs> <laughs> bigger is better there's no way around it and you can't convince me that it's not because it is what i love about this particular design is these swirly swirl patterns look like my tamuku if you'd notice you may not have noticed on my arm here <laughs> this is my uh birthday present that i gave to myself Five years ago, when I returned to New Zealand, I'd been living in Australia all my life, 47 years. And then five years ago, I found my birth family and returned home. It was an awesome story. It's on my blog if you're interested. If you're not interested, don't stress. I'm not going to bore you. But it is a really cool story. It didn't quite turn out like the TV show because my birth mother actually doesn't want to tell her family that I exist. I am a 50-year-old secret. And it was a little passion flower on the side, right? <laughs> not my fault. I'm the product, not the cause. Anyway, she won't tell her family that I exist. But hello, here I am. <laughs> That's another story. And I found my way home. So I had this beautiful tamuku um, done for me, which was an original design by Tippy. And this represents the two streams of my life, Pākehā and Māori, also adopted and birth family, and then coming together is what creates who I am. This is the reconnection to Aotearoa, New Zealand, and then the scales represent the families or the ancestries or the history of the land. People are very connected to land, to each other, and to the history of ancestry. It's very deep. This um, represents my four children. And this section here, I had this section done when my daughter came to visit me a couple of years ago before the whole COVID drama. This represents the strength of the hammerhead shark. And this whole piece is about endurance, 
which hello if you've lived in, <laughs> on the planet for a while you need some endurance <laughs> so i love my tattoo you might think it's a little weird but it represents me finding who i am my identity my birth heritage my culture and what it did for me was really reconnect with a sense of self and identity because i had ca carried an abandonment issue all my life being an adopted person. Anyway, wasn't going to go there, did, <laughs> but here we are. But why I'm saying this is because this beautiful stencil has these kind of shapes in it. Now, this swirly pattern here is very reminiscent of the kuru, which is this shape here, and that is the unfurling of the fern frond which in my garden, I have one of these fantastic ferns. Here it is. See that piece there? That uncurls and all the fern, the fronds of the fern unfold. So it represents new life, new beginning. Uh, it's very hopeful, kind of a symbol. I'm very connected to that because I'm a very hopeful person. So this uh, stencil reminds me of these shapes and I'm, I'm really loving it. It's actually quite reminiscent of this particular painting is one of my paintings I did in my journey home when I first came home to New Zealand. Um, it has the traditional kofaifai, which is the patterns that's on the meeting house or on the canoes of the Maori um, culture and tradition. And I did studies on that for the first couple of years and uh, I did a whole series of paintings out of it. You also see in this one, there's a lot of the land, the sea and the sky, which is very reminiscent of New Zealand. New Zealand is a beautiful country. So when I think of New Zealand, it's very turquoise and blues and cobalt. So we're going to do some turquoise and blues and um, create some uh, prints and make some papers and put a collage together because I just really like doing that. And you seem to be enjoying hanging out with me and watching this creative process and then doing some yourself so you know we may as well keep going on this tangent it's working right now i'm gonna have to use this stencil because it's magnificent i love it so let's create some gel prints with this beautiful new stencil yes bigger is better that's all i'm gonna say about that <laughs> and let's use some beautiful turquoise and some blues and get a little bit of the glorious ocean colors happening and then we'll see what we might do with that um possibilities are endless there is all there is to it we can't really do anything with these beautiful colors and this particular concept i was actually um adopted at nine days old my birth mother had a mighty fine time with a beautiful Maori boy who could tell stories, play the guitar. But then when she found out she was pregnant, she went away up north to Auckland. She um, gave birth to me and then she went back to her life and pretended that nothing had happened and she didn't tell anybody that I existed. I know, right? How could you, how could you do that? <laughs> Anyway, whatever, Trevor, that's what happened. Let's just take this beautiful print, just like this, first of all. Just, oh, the sheer magnificence of the colour. I love it. I love it. It's just standard copy paper, nothing exciting. We just want to take, oops, the print and see how beautiful it looks and marvel at its fabulous design. Anyway, so she went on with her life. And didn't tell anyone, but she did keep a photo of my birth father and the details. And so when my best friend harassed me literally into finding my birth family and we hunted her down, which was really easy with public records, let me tell you. Oh, look at that. That's just beautiful. I'm loving that. See? See, so you can feel the connection. I'm feeling the connection. I'm going to make a few more beautiful prints on some. I've got some background somewhere. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Let's hunt that up. Um. Anyway, and so when we did find her through public records, she gave me 
my birth father's details. Oh, glorious. But he'd passed away a long time ago. I never met him. I did meet um, some of his children and his family, and they were far more embracing, some of them. <laughs> I am one of 13 siblings. I know, right? What can I say? The man had a lot of love to give. <laughs> and did I mention I was a passion flower on the side? He was already married and had already had a family. I know. You know, these love children of the 60s. So look at that. Look at that. The whole piece of paper is covered with paint. And that's why I upscaled to the bigger gel plate because I was getting too much white around my edges and it was irritating me. But look at that. It is magnificent. Oh. Anyway, I did find his family and I now have beautiful sisters and brothers who mostly are happy to know me. <laughs> I haven't met all of them. <laughs> well, uh, look at that. That is just a beautiful pattern. That is just glorious. I love it. I'm going to print a heap of these off and then put something together. And I think we need some power. Now, my parents divorced. I'm sorry that I'm so personal this week. Oh, my gosh. It's, the, it's their fault. It's PM Artist Studios' fault that I'm being so personal because of their stencil. <laughs> it's just how it is. But my parents divorced when I was seven, and my dad came back to New Zealand, and my mum stayed in Australia. So that's why I have an Australian accent. <laughs> sorry about it. And for me, coming home to New Zealand during school holidays every few years it was always about the power this is the beautiful power that i'm talking about it's actually a sea creature and it's black on the inside of the shell and you know people eat it i don't eat it i don't even do seafood i know i'm weird but mm, i don't eat it i'm like yeah no no i ain't eating that nasty stuff but a lot of people do eat it and it's supposed to be very nice you have to grind all of this stuff off the shell and that's an, that is another beautiful analogy in itself finding the beauty within not looking at the outside and judging by the harshness or the roughness of what you might see i know right we're going deep um the beauty is within anyway this these ones i got from kaikoura before the earthquake which was really cool they're beautiful, but these colours, it's these colours, to me, is very New Zealand. The beautiful metallic greens, the blues, the purples, the absolutely gorgeous colours of the power, that is just symbolises New Zealand. So we need to make some power tissue. I'm feeling the need to do that. I'm going to print a few more of these fabulous, gorgeous, swirly swirl prints. And I think we need to make some power tissue to go with that and then put it together in a collage. That'll be fun, hey? And, you know, I might tell more of my story because it's just coming out today. So if you don't know where New Zealand is, it is a neighbour of Australia. You've probably heard of Australia. It's quite a big continent. Uh, New Zealand is towards the right on a map, but only if you're not looking at the IKEA map. I mean, there was an IKEA map. You know IKEA, right? They put a map out, a globe, global map of the world, and they didn't put New Zealand on it. <laughs> I think that is flaming hilarious because, hello, it's a safe country. You can't send a missile here if you don't even know we exist. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. I don't think other people thought that was. I don't think the Prime Minister thought it was very hilarious, but I did. I'm like, well, they can't shoot us if they can't find us, right? <laughs> anyway, anyway, on the map, it's uh, right near Australia, and I have lived there all my life, which is why I have more of an Aussie accent than what I have New Zealand accent. I have really found quite... A significant strength just in myself coming home and finding my culture and uh, where I came from where I belong and you know there's a lot of people here that look like me that's always really good it's a little on the round side 
very kind of loud and demonstrative and boisterous. So I never really felt I fit in growing up. But, you know, coming home here has been very easy to see myself everywhere. And that's really important. All right, look at that. That is beautiful. I'm loving this beautiful stencil. Let's pull that. Ah, oh, I was going to get some backgrounds, wasn't I? I've got them somewhere. Nah, I'll have to reach. <laughs> I'll go and find some background colours. Print some more stencils. Because, oh, this is just too much fun. These beautiful blues and turquoise. Anyway, so that's why I sound like an Aussie, but I look like a Kiwi because I've got, you know, both cultures growing up ingrained in who I am, which is what this is represented by. And, you know, that's okay. You just have to understand that I'm a bit of a mongrel, you know, <laughs> mongrels. They've got bits of this and bits of that, and that's what makes them who they are. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. When you get a strong sense of self, in your identity, it really does make a huge difference to how you view the world. Look at that. I mean, come on. You can't tell me that <laughs> size. I'm telling you, bigger is better. That is just beautiful. Now my brand new gel print is starting to give me some good response here. So, you know, it's going to be a beautiful Sunday. Because I did really have some, you know, rejection and abandonment issues growing up. I was a little bit of an angst teenager. Not at all impressed with life. But I do think that that's the baggage that you carry, being an adopted person. Look at this beautiful turquoise. Oh, loving it. But, you know, sometimes... You just got to find who you are and where you fit and everything comes right. There we go. Now I'm putting a background. This, this was already a print I had. I've got lots of gel prints all over my studio at different stages and I just like to use them. That is just no white. Oh my gosh. I'm in love. That is fabulous. Now, not all of my siblings wanted to meet me because, you know, hello, I'm knocking on their door going, oh, beautiful. Knocking on their door going, I'm, um, yeah, I'm your sister from another mother. And that didn't you know, necessarily go down well with everybody because nobody wants to be told that our old man was a player. What can I say? <laughs> well, that's just how it is, man. That's just how it is. Oh, no. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. <laughs> That'll be okay. A little bit of therapy helps everybody. <laughs> oh, just loving the size of this gel plate. That's just flipping beautiful just flipping beautiful yay loving the turquoise we're gonna do a little bit of turquoise but you know the siblings that i did find and the ones that did want to meet um were are pretty cool they really are beautiful i now have a sister i didn't have who loves me and we chat all the time and that's pretty cool i mean that's a pretty cool gain at this stage in my life to say my birth mother still doesn't want to tell her family that i exist but you know her loss right <laughs> that's her loss man seriously why wouldn't you want to know me i'm awesome <laughs> so whatever trevor oh look at that color oh that is just the turquoise with some pastel ultramarine and the phthalo turquoise pretty nice pretty nice yes i'm still using the same stencil because i'm loving it and it's working beautiful what are we putting that on let's put that on this 
I've got some pretty boring prints laying around, so I'll we'll give them a bit of a dose of fabulous swirly swirl stencil. And I'm loving it. I think it has really made me so much stronger as a person within myself, finding just the knowledge, just the history of where I come from and who I am. Um, even if, you know, my birth mother doesn't want to acknowledge me or tell her family or blah, 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 whatever. And even if my other siblings aren't interested, I don't care. I'm like, I know now and just knowing, ah. Oh, beautiful just knowing has really meant so much knowledge is power people just the knowing has really made a huge huge massive i can't even tell you how much massive difference it's made to my life i'm just using white tissue like this at the moment really i'm just using stuff that's laying around just having a bit of fun oopsies Telling some stories. Beautiful colour. Beautiful print. Look at that. So I um so I was in Christchurch quite a few years ago where my bestie is who harassed me into finding out all of this information, which I am incredibly grateful. Incredibly grateful. Anyway, there was an art shop there, glorious. And I bought this paper. I don't know what it's called, but it's got this swirl on it. See, we're going with this swirl. We're going with the kuru, the unfurling of the fern frond, the new life, the new hope. Yes, I am so all about it. Um, I don't know if this idea will work, by the way. I just pulled it out of my drawer. Oh, there's another one. I pulled it out of my drawer and thought, you know, that's the shape I'm really liking today. So... Let's put it on the plate, my new, hello, beautiful, amazing, large gel plate and see what it prints like. Because I think it will go really well with this theme, this theme of the journey home. I'm thinking. Oh, yes, look at that. Oh, look at that. That looks awesome. We're going to have to use that in the collage. Oh, look at that. Looks amazing. Oh, man. I mean, paper's not big enough. <laughs> Let's go that way. Let's go that way with that one. I've got these papers pre cut, but it's cl serious. Clearly, they were pre cut for my smaller size plate. Now I'll have to pre cut some this bigger size plate oh the joy of bigger bigger is better look at that this will pull quite a nice print don't you think don't know what the paper's called not a clue and the art shop has closed down sorry can't get it for you but that took an awesome print and i think we might paint that and use it for a piece of this amazing collage that i'm going to put together that's a cool idea too. Yeah, let's do that. Righto, righto, if you insist, let's do that. Oh, yes. Look at that. That printed up just fabulous. Look at that. There it is right there. Love it. That is just beautiful. So that was just putting the textured paper, which I've got no idea what it's called and can't find it for you. But that is putting the textured paper straight on the gel plate and putting the print. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. What else can I find? <laughs> Hang on, hold the phone caller. I might have to go and have a rummage in my studio. So I've got some turquoise and some indigo or blue black is the color that it's called and oh my gosh oh it looks like a deep swimming pool that is glorious but i'm going to use this textured paper again because that was just fun let's put it there seeing as my paper's pretty cut to the small size we'll put it there what was i up to my story i don't know <laughs> 
gotten. Anyway, here I am. I'm a bit of Australian, bit of New Zealand. I'm both Pākehā and Māori. Trace my ancestry to up north, Ngāpui tribe. And it's pretty cool, just saying. It's really cool to know where I come from. Oh, look at that. And I will tell you something pretty flipping amazing. So the most recent thing is I found, we found, we as in the other siblings, found our birth grandfather who was an African-American serviceman, came to New Zealand during the war for a bit of R&R. &R. Had a little mighty fine time. I know, right? There's a pattern. <laughs> and um, went back home again, but had left behind a pregnant Māori lady who gave birth to um, Dalbert. So Dalbert is my biological father. So my grandfather is actually African-American. So I think... My granddad was born in Nebraska. Oh, this color is the winner. Yes, that's beautiful. We're doing something with that. Can you believe that? Oh, I can't believe that, man. Seriously. So I'm actually connected to God Bless America. Hello to y'all from the States. And um, I think that's really cool. I've now met over Zoom family members. And the story just goes on, I need to say. It's quite incredible. And that's not far up the tree. That's my father's father. Like, that's not very far um, removed. That's pretty bizarre. Look at that. That's beautiful. I love it. Absolutely love it. I love that pattern. I love the texture. I love the color, the intensity, because this all is pretty intense. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to put one or some of these beautiful printed kuru, I call them kurus, I know they're not, but I'm calling them that, right? Because um, in my collage, and then we're going to create some power colored tissue, which we're going to do next. And then we're going to have that tissue background. We're going to use these as a feature of some sort. And we're going to put in the fabulous swirly swirl printed gel prints as well and we're going to make something oh my gosh a beautiful and you're going to love it and you're going to go i want to visit new zealand and you can come visit me <laughs> it's really not a problem i got plenty of room here where i live so yeah come on over we could be related i'm telling you <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you it's quite amazing what you find when you start looking uh, it can be a little terrifying as well, mind you. Mine didn't work out exactly like the fabulous TV shows where there's all crying and hugging. No, my birth mother was not like that at all. But, I mean, she did give me my birth father's um, name, photograph, and now I know the family and I know the history. And it has incredibly dramatically impacted my life positive. So, you know, I can't scoff too much, but I do still have a little sting there, if you know what I mean. Righto, so let's make some beautiful power tissue because this is going to work really well. Right, so I have christened my fabulous new jelly plate. Oh, it's got a little bit of tint of turquoise on it now. Um, we're going to make some beautiful tissue in power colours to go with the collage. This is galactic blue in the Dalaroni fw pearlescent love oh my gosh love these inks now if you are in beautiful new zealand i'll put a link to the art supply store where i get all these inks from because he's doing a deal right now and you need to get in on that um if you are in god bless america you have you know copious amounts of places to buy these beautiful art supplies this is a liquitex i love 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 liquitex these are my two favorite brands of inks. It's just personal preference. You don't have to use these stuff. I'm not selling it to you. I don't get a percentage or a royalty off it. I just want to answer questions because I'm getting questions on what I'm using. So, you know, don't feel like I'm trying to sell your stuff because I'm not. This one is a muted gray. They've just brought out a beautiful muted range in the Liquitex. Oh, my gosh. Now, I have shown you how to do this technique 
already there is a video on YouTube of me doing the tissue. So you can have a look at that as well if you want to see me do that. It's very technical. You have to pay serious attention <laughs> because you throw the inks on and then you spray it with water. I mean, I mean, you know, got some serious, serious techniques here. <laughs> very serious, all very serious. That not serious at all. Um, anyway, back to my story. I think it all turned out rather well. I was adopted at nine days old. My mum, that has me, my adopted mum, is my mum. And, you know, she's still with me. So I did okay. I was in a home that did love me. I had a lot of angst being adopted. You have a lot of issues with abandonment. Why was I thrown away? What's wrong with me that I, they didn't want me? It's just ingrained. I think personally, my little theory is that it happens in the womb when you're getting made. She decided she didn't want me. I was an embarrassment. She had me out of wedlock. She was Pakeha. He was a Maori boy. You know, 1967, that wasn't kosher so well. So she decided she would get rid of me and not mention me ever again. You know, her loss, all I can say. But all I'm meaning is that things have worked out okay. It's not so much what happens to you in life. It's how you actually deal with it. What really matters? Oh, this is, oh my gosh, this is shimmering blue. That is the secret source to the power color, let me tell you. The FW shimmering blue, because that's what has that beautiful mother of pearl, incredible look of the power, is the interference inks. That's what they are. They look amazing over the dark colors. So if you're going to use them, they try to set them over darker colors because that's what really highlights the interference paints is when they're over dark colors. So like if I put a little drop over these blues, they'll look amazing. It'll get that pearlescent kind of power shell look. That one, also the shimmering green is really amazing too. You probably can't see that, but that's what gives this kind of beautiful metallic look. I mean, isn't that glorious? I just love the power. It's just amazing. In fact, in my tamuku here, I've got a piece of power in there because I love it so much. And um, my four little treasures are symbolized there too. It's just really quite a significant part of who I am. I love it. This one is a muted turquoise. They're muted ones that have come out recently with Liquitex. Oh, man, you need to look at them. Seriously. I'm going to have to do a whole episode on some of the colors that I've just seen come out in the muted tones. They're amazing. They're just amazing. You want to eat them. So basically, you throw the inks on literally, and then you spray it with water. You don't have to use these colors that I've used, but I want to show you how magnificent these are for creating that power look. See, look, already you can see. See, see, see? How it goes into all of the kind of organic line because I'm spraying it with water. It creates its own organic line and it looks amazing. Now, I use tissue recycled. I love recycled paper packaging. Hello is my best friend. So tissue that comes wrapped around the amazing things I have to purchase online works fabulous. Doesn't matter that it's crinkled already. Doesn't matter at all. So you want to use recycled tissue. I also will use tissue from the dollar shop and I have been known to buy some from the art shop just to check whether or not that's better. But I don't know. It seems to all... I use it for the gel prints and it all seems to just work the same. Righto, now I need to leave it alone because otherwise I do tend to overspray and it all becomes one big colour. You want to make sure you have your tissue on plastic, on a plastic tablecloth. Otherwise, that's all going to stick to your table and you're never going to get it off. Now this beautiful, lovely inks have to dry and then you can peel your tissue off. We're going to use that in the collage and it's going to look amazing. If you do 
If you are at all interested in the story of finding my birth family and what it felt like and how I did that, you can have a look at my blog on my website. I've got it all written there. Um, you might really connect with that. That might be you. Um, if you were asking the question, should I do it? Should I find my birth family? I would say yes. Not at the time, but I would say yes now in hindsight because it has been incredibly empowering as a person. I have found it very empowering. At the time, it was incredibly terrifying because you don't know what you're going to get. You've already been rejected once. You don't want to get rejected again. It's a terrifying experience. You've got to make sure you've got really good friends around you that can help you through the process. Right now, this is looking cool. I'm going to leave it alone. I know I said I was going to. And we'll let that dry and see what we get. You never quite know until it's dry. But, you know, it's pretty good chance it's going to be amazing because the colours are beautiful. So Liquitex inks and the FW Pearlescent inks. If you want to put some of the beautiful power colours on, then it's the shimmering blue and the shimmering green. And, you know, basically... Throw it on tissue, even recycled tissue. Spray it with water. And there you go. It is amazing. Right out. We'll leave it alone. Let it dry and do its thing. And then we'll see how we go. Okay. So while my fabulous power tissue is drying, I thought I might have another play with this stencil. My gel plate's been christened. We've got a few prints off that. And I thought I'd just play with the stencil. So I've put in some beautiful interference blue, which is this color in the power that I love so much. It's an interference paint. I thought I'd mix it with the phthalo and see, see how beautiful that is. I mean, come on, that is just glorious. Look at that. Oh, yes. So I thought I'd have a little play with that. It's just making it more a, a kind of metallic-y, pearlescent-y, turquoise-y colour. Let's stick it on this. So let's put it on that. I'm using that. And of course, you know, if you've seen me before, I don't dab politely. No. Oh. There's nothing dabbing politely about me. That's just how I am. Oh, look at that. Straight on with a palette knife. Beautiful shapes. Beautiful pattern. And I'm just loving it. These stencils really do handle it quite well. The amount of paint that I like to put on them. Look at that, fabulous. That is just fabulous. All right, this was just a background piece of gel print that I had. Oh, look at that. That is just glorious. I love it. I right, don't, we have to make some more of those. <laughs> you see how it goes? Why make one when you can make 20? <laughs> Let's do that on this piece. Ooh. This is a piece of tissue. We may need to be a little. This is what I just printed, actually. I was cleaning off my beautiful new gel plate and I just stuck a piece of tissue on to clean off the turquoise. And I went, oh, that's nice. So let's put a stencil on that with what we have here. Not much left, but we can spread it out. That'll work. That's going to be beautiful. Just know it. Ready? Da 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 da! Oh, love it. Look at that. That is beautiful. That'll work in my collage. And I love it. So, what we might do now. I've got some of these darker backgrounds. And you know what? I think we should just put the interference paint on them and see what it looks like. It's a good idea. 
Okay, so I'm just going to use the interference, it's interference blue, it's a golden full bodied paint. Interference paint look best over dark backgrounds. The interference paint, they are coated mica flakes and they interfere with the light spectrum. So they look nothing when you put it on top of um, white or light backgrounds, but they look amazing and they come alive when you put them over dark backgrounds. I love them. That clearly is the color in the, two, in the power there. Interference blue right there. So well, I'm just going to put it straight onto with the stencil on this background. Now you won't see the effect of the interference color until the oops until the print is dry because it just doesn't look like anything until then. So you know, being patient, people that we are, we're going to have to wait for the print to dry before you can see its absolute magnificence. Right. Oh, yes, I already know I'm going to love it. Love it. Love it. So that would be more of that beautiful interference color. Once it dries, I'll show you. That is just beautiful. Okay, so I had to do it. I pulled out the interference green because that's what's in there as well as the interference blue. So we have to do it. We just, oops, have to. Interference green, golden. Now it's on this dark background. You've got to remember that because otherwise there's no impact. I also have another video on YouTube all about uh, interference paints and using them in jelly prints in case you want to know. Oh, look at that. It's going to be amazing. Um, if you want more in-depth lesson on that. This is going to look glorious. It's got a little bit of the turquoise mix on it because we've got that from the stencil already. But, you know, oh, it's going to work. I just know it. Again, we're going to have to wait for it to dry to really see the impact of the colour. But we can do that. We're patient people. <sighs> Oh, that's going to be amazing. You wait till that's dried. You're not going to believe it. Your eyeballs are going to fall out of your head. So we're, you're getting the drift, right? You're loving my power feel. I'm telling you, this is very New Zealand. The power colours, the turquoises, the deep ocean blues, the beautiful sky tones. Oh, yay. My papers are all dry now. And how beautiful is this? It is glorious. It dries into the organic shape of the water. So this is the beautiful interference green ink. It's called shimmering green. It is glorious. And that's the blue one. You see how power looking it is? I mean, seriously, look. Ah, glorious. Yes, I know. It's absolutely fabulous. I love it so much. Love making this tissue. I'm... I do tend to make, you know, 50 when I make one. So I do have now quite, quite a few pieces of it. I love it. It's just glorious. Depending on what particular ink you put on your tissue, it will be different. Every single piece is unique and different because it's like the mono prints. You know, depending on what paint you pull and which colors you put on, it's going to be all different. Same with these beautiful pieces of tissue. They're all different depending on the different amount of inks and the colors. Look at them. Glorious. Glorious. Absolutely love it. Oh, that's the galactic blue right there. Absolutely beautiful. I love it. Yes, we have that to play with. Um, now, my fabulous prints. So this was the jelly prints with just the basic Densel on there and of course I did print a few different ones of those. They're all dry and looking beautiful. I'm loving this stencil. I have a huge pile of those over there. These are the ones with the fabulous interference paint. I know. Look at that. 
Isn't it just glorious? It really is. It's just beautiful. I love it. It is very power. Yes, it is right there. Same with the green. I mean, look, see, same, 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 same. <laughs> I love it. There's more of them. Yes, I know. They're everywhere. Oh, look at this one. Look at this one too. That's got a little bit of the turquoise with the interference paint. That looks nice. So question is, folks, oh, which ones are we going to decide on to use in the collage? That's always the problem. Oh, and then there's this. This was what I was printing with this fabulous textured paper. Uh, created these prints. These look fabulous too. Um, I'm liking the moody indigo tones. They look great. Also did some other lighter ones, playing with some different color combinations. Just doing the same thing, putting the paint down, putting the textured paper on the gel plate, pulling the print. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You probably have different textured paper that you could try this with. Doesn't even have to be the swirly kuru. It could be something else. If you can't get that, come visit me. I'll give you some. <laughs> Actually, I can't even get any more of it. It's so funny. So this one, I pulled the ghost print with silver. Look at that. That's fun. And then it was a bit blank. So what I did was I got my paper. I painted it with the phthalo turquoise. And then I stamped it like that on top. I know, right? really difficult stuff and that's what it did i'm loving it i love this so it's got a silver background it's got the turquoise and it's just turned out beautiful so which one shall i use we're obviously going to go with one of them or some of them or something but where will we start what will we start with <laughs> i don't know we're definitely going to be using the power tissue okay that's a definite now which of the stencils do we want to use of the prints the gel prints or the stencil print um i'm thinking i'm thinking i'm thinking i'm liking that one yep that one but we need one of these ones so do we want to go darker or lighter do we want more definition or do we want to be like all like moody you know i don't know but i'm gonna have to clear everything off make a decision and let's put a collage together oh my lord that is so much fun righto so i think i'm getting it narrowed down <laughs> i mean it really is quite an adventure i have my matte medium i like to use matte medium i have a couple of pairs of scissors i have my fabulous water brush pen which is good for go going around shapes on tissue Nah, I think I'm pretty good to go. And now I just need to make serious decisions. I'm out of all of these beautiful um, stenciled prints, which I just love. I think I might go with this one on the tissue. And I think I'm going to use one of these. Now I'm only going to use one, even though I've got 20, because I think it'll make a stronger... Um, focal point that's just what i'm thinking at the moment and anything is subject to change <laughs> on a whim <laughs> Extend it over there. I'm liking this. This is kind of almost like the wave too. The thing is, the first peoples that came to New Zealand were on a waka or a canoe. And most Māori tribes and people can actually trace their ancestries back to the main few waka that arrived in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Which is fascinating, don't you think? I think that's pretty fascinating. I think that's pretty amazing. Yeah, let's go with some of this. That looks like beautiful blue water. We'll put it under there. Let's 
like that. Let's get rid of that hard edge. So, you know, we've got to go with the water because all beautiful adventures to New Zealand starts with embracing the ocean because that's how you get there. <laughs> We're an island <laughs> down the bottom of the planet. <laughs> In case you don't know, <laughs> We're at the bottom of the planet on an island. And if everyone stays off our island, we'll be fine. <laughs> All right. So that's going on like that. And that's going there. Oh, I'm liking this already. Um, I'm thinking this one with the dark. It's got a really nice shape to it. Maybe this one. Yeah, that'll work. Maybe. Might. <laughs> Nothing's a guarantee at this stage of the day. Um, actually, I don't know, but I'm going to fill that space up with more the other side of this, maybe, because it's beautiful. There you go. That's a decision made. Rip the hard edge off. Like that. Put it on that edge, that edge, and that goes under there. And we'll cut that off when it dries. I don't know. See, we are making some decisions. We're it's all after a good start. It's a beautiful thing. So if you're wondering how to do these collages, just start. Really? Just start. Just decide to put on some glue. You can use a glue stick or PVA. I just personally like to use matte medium because I like the brush. Really, I like brushing it on. I like brushing it smooth. And it just works me, makes me happy. That's what it's all about. Uh, but... You don't have to use matte medium. You can use a glue stick. You can use PVA. You can use whatever makes you happy. Look at these colors. I mean, come on. That's just glorious in any language. Look at that. Oh, look, that's just a glorious color. That's the interference green there. And then we've got the interference blue there. And it's just... Beautiful, really is. I'm gonna put this other one over on this side. Not sure how crazy abstract this is going to be, but you know, I'm just gonna go with how it makes me feel. At this stage, I've got no idea. I just know I'm loving these colors. Shared a bit of my story and you know, it's a beautiful way to spend an afternoon. Tell ya, it's not bad. So what I find really bizarre about the whole just found my granddad, right? Is that he came over to New Zealand uh, in the service of the Navy after the war or the end of the war for a bit of R&R. &R. You know, details are sketchy. We're talking way back. So, you know, there's no, there's no Facebook there. You can't find out who did what. <laughs> anyway, comes over and he, you know, the servicemen were escorting the beautiful Maori girls to the dancers. And you know how it goes, a little bit of slap and tickle, a little bit of fun along the way, and oops, just tore me paper. This is getting a bit excited. <laughs> and um, then he heads off back to the States because he can't stay. He's got to go back. He's in the service. And, uh, you know, she finds out she's pregnant. Now, I don't know because that's where it all gets a little fuzzy, whether... Um, Gerald actually knew that he had left behind a um, belly full of arms and legs, but um, he didn't know, his family didn't know anyway. So then Grandma Sophie had Dalbert, which is my birth father, and then she went on and married somebody else and had a whole other family. Well, Gerald goes back to America and he gets married and has a whole other family. And that whole other family didn't even know that he had left this lovely little package in New Zealand that had started a whole other family. And Dalbert, my father, um, had four children when he had a mighty fine time with my birth mother, whose name I cannot mention because she won't acknowledge me. <laughs> issues much? Issues? <laughs> I think that's funny. So we go there? Yeah, but that edge needs to come off. So anyway... Um, look at that. That's beautiful. Love that. So Gerald didn't know that he had left Dalbert in New Zealand. And his family didn't know. 
until recently when we found them. It's quite amazing, really. Anyway, Carol didn't tell Dalbert that I was born. He didn't know that I existed at all. Don't you think it's bizarre? I think it's bizarre. <laughs> I think it's a little bizarre. So now I'm finding all of this family that didn't know about the other peoples in the family, and it's actually quite amazing. So I had a, I had a Zoom meeting recently with the American contingent of the family, and they didn't know that there was a New Zealand side. You know, Granddad Gerald died quite a while ago, but his son is still there, and his son's in his 70s, right, my uncle, and he's like, wow, <laughs> he was an only sibling and he didn't know that on the other side of the world, he had a half brother who decided to, you know, populate his own football team. <laughs> and now he's got all of these nephews and nieces and cousins and bros across the shore. It's pretty darn amazing, really. I think it's quite fascinating that we found that part of the story. I think that's quite amazing. And I think it's quite amazing that they didn't know Dalbert existed. Dalbert didn't know I existed. I mean, far out. Can history just keep repeating itself? That's looking beautiful. Loving it. Anyway, it's quite fascinating, but... I won't bore you with too many more details. <laughs> You're probably like, shut up. What is this, find my family? <laughs> Actually, it was like that. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> Righto, that is beautiful. You're only going to keep hearing about it while I'm creating with this beautiful stencil. That makes me feel like the journey home. And it is all very new and fresh for me. Righto. But you won't be tortured forever. That looks fabulous. I'm loving that wave underneath of the ocean. The ocean is a significant part of New Zealand culture. That is fabulous. Now, mm, 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 what do we want next? Okay, so I think I want to um, just tear off one of these beautiful kuru shapes. The circle. Loving it. I actually do love that I have found the story of my family. I really do. There's something incredibly liberating about understanding your own identity. That's what I have found. Um, because if you know who you are, I think that just really empowers you and gives you strength in all of the things. Because, you know, life can be tough. People can be cruel. But I don't know, I've found a real strength in the knowledge of who I am and where I come from. And fascinating, let me tell you. I mean, I have a very fascinating side with the American side um, from my grandfather's family going up the tree and out spreading out in the branches. I have an auntie who was a very strong activist. And I even have seen a photo of her sitting with JFK. Seriously. I'm not dropping names here. I'm telling you, this is real. I found this out about a month ago. And I'm like, man, that's serious. Look at that. That's just beautiful. We have to use that. I like that. Right, we're going to do that. And we're going to put it right there. Oh, yes. That was meant to be there. Now, should we put the beautiful power tissue over here. I'm loving this. You know, I almost want to continue this pattern. I wonder if I've got one that looks close-ish. That's not bad. Yeah, we could do that one. Do I want to do that? Do I want to add some more of, oh, that's pretty, this is one's pretty nice too. I think I'll just tear some up and put some up there. So Gerald Phillips' family is um now in california i think and um yeah they're pretty cool nice people but you know you be careful you shake that family tree you don't know what's gonna what's gonna drop out i mean seriously these people didn't even know this whole side of the tree existed this whole new zealand contingent they didn't even know we were all over here and you know dalbert 
Being the lover, not a fighter that he was, having his 14 children, <laughs> they suddenly have a whole lot of family going on. And, you know, Auntie Val, I mean, hello, she was the first um, African-American judge in Milwaukee. I'm not sure where Milwaukee is. I've seen it on Happy Days. But other than that, I don't know where Milwaukee is. But that's pretty cool. I think I need some of this paper. Right, righto, let's just tear some of that off. That's just beautiful. So, I don't know where these places are. All I know is that across the ocean there, we're connected. And also, be, you know, you got to be careful. You don't know what's coming. I mean, these, this lovely man that I talked to the other day over um, Zoom, you know, he didn't have a clue that this could have possibly popped up at this stage of his life, right? So who does? Who has that kind of idea? No one knows what's coming down that pipeline. So, you know, don't get too comfortable in your life. You don't know what's around that corner and what can possibly pop up. But I'm pretty happy that, you know, I've got a great auntie somewhere up the tree that was a civil rights activist who achieved amazing things for both the African-American community and for women. Yay! Yay, team! You know, well, that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I don't know too much more, actually. <laughs> that's a little bits and pieces that I've been putting together from what my other siblings have been telling me. And, you know... I've got more of the pasty side of the gene pool. <laughs> My biological mother was blonde haired, blue eyed, with long legs and in, hello, in a nursing uniform. <laughs> you can see how that happened as Dalbert was, you know, driving the bus. So, what can I say? I'm a lot fairer in skin colour than all my other rallies. But, yeah, they seem to be handling it okay. Everyone's okay, mostly. So we're all good in the hood. Right, now, that's pretty beautiful. Does anybody know what I'm going to do next with this, however? Yeah. Anyway, I think it's, it's pretty fascinating. But truly, nobody could see this coming. My siblings didn't know. Um, that I was around and none of these people from over in beautiful America knew that they had a whole other family in New Zealand. So, you know, you just don't know what's going to pop up at any stage of life. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. That's nice. So I'm doing this whole, this could be land, sea and sky really because that's pretty nice little Almost landscapey look going on there. That's beautiful tissue with the coloured inks. Truly, you have to make yourself some. It's amazing. I just love it. I'm definitely loving this kind of land and sea feeling that that's got going on. I think I might continue the, this stencil. I like this. Might repeat it. I just can't decide which one I like. The more. Oh, I am very keep coming back to that one, don't I? Right, I'm gonna have to use it. Just gonna have to. Be wrong not to. I think it's all pretty funny. But what's even more funny is that I'm telling you about it. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oh man. That's pretty funny. So I need to pull this thing together. What's going on? Yeah, concentrate. Stop flapping me gums. Seriously. Oops, move that. As you can see, I don't have a plan. <laughs> and I am literally picking up pieces of this beautiful paper and sticking it on. So when I met my brother Brownie, he's up in Whangarei. That's up north of New Zealand. I, when I met him the first time. He um, recited our whakapapa, which is the whole genealogy of your family, right from when the first Māori stepped off the waka, the original canoes, he had the whakapapa or genealogy all traced and sorted. He knew who was who in the zoo, except he didn't know about me, but, <laughs> but he, he knew about everyone that had been acknowledged. <laughs> uh, so that was really actually quite empowering. Uh, I found that experience to be incredibly empowering.
to have someone tell you this is who you are this is where you come from you've descended from this person and from this tribe and from this waka and it was actually really quite incredible it's an incredible experience then the second time that i went to visit brownie he took me to our father's grave which was up north and um that was incredible but it's kind of a bizarre feeling to be standing at a man's grave who didn't know you existed and then there's all the other relatives in that cemetery as well and it was you know it was a very moving experience a little surreal to be honest and kind of bizarre but uh, very, very moving and very liberating to actually be connected. I think we need to be connected. We are pack animals. We do tend to move in herds. And I do think we need to be connected. I'm loving this. Are you liking this? I'm loving this. Look at it. It's just, that really does look like the movement of the water. I know I was going with the power colours, but it looks like the movement of the water to me. It's pretty cool, eh? Yeah. I'm thinking it's pretty cool. That's pretty beautiful. And that's what we're going for. We'll trim that off once we're done. That's pretty cool. But now what do we want to do? Do I want to put this on? I don't know if I do now. Maybe I do. Because the only difficult part about doing a collage like this is that you don't know where you're going or what you're doing. So um, sometimes it's hard to kind of Oops, no, if you're happy with what, how it's going because you don't know what you're trying to achieve anyway. And don't put too much pressure on your tissue when it's drying because <laughs> you'll put holes in it. Eh, leave it alone. So I don't know. I'm thinking that's too big and too heavy now that I've got this beautiful ocean flow happening. Look at that. That's really beautiful. Maybe we could put some silver. Ooh, yes. Let's put some silver ink into that. I want to extend this stencil. So I might just stencil it straight on. Well, this is not going anywhere near where I thought it might. <laughs> and it's probably because I've been yapping. Oh man, I should just pay attention to what I'm doing instead of flapping my gums. Anyway, there you go. It is what it is. It's getting created like it is. Okay, so I've put out some turquoise and some interference green, full-bodied. Now, I don't know, man. This is still bugging me. I like it, but I don't. I was going to go in that direction and do it all full-on abstract. Now I'm like, I don't know. I'm feeling the water here. It just feels like water to me now, the way I put that on. See, if I was concentrating, <laughs> I might have fared better. But anyway, what can I say? It is what it is. Right, I'm going to put this on here. Wish me luck, because I don't even think that the tissue is overly, completely dry. It's going to be smudgy, just know, okay? So don't be telling me, because that'd be annoying. <laughs> I, know, I know it's going to be smudgy, because it's not laying down entirely flat, and the tissue is still a little bit wet, but it'll be all right, right? doesn't matter that much the interference green will look fabulous on that color um do we want to run it on top of the other one why not i say why not let's just do that it doesn't look any good i can always wipe it off right if it doesn't look any good you can just wipe it off it'll be okay not quite life and death. I've survived worse. <laughs> right, let's see how. Oh, maybe a bit more. A bit more. A bit more. Tiny bit left there on the palette. Ta da! You know, it's not too horrific. It is a little smudgy, but eh, I can fix that. You see, you don't have to stress too much. Just wipe it back off with a baby wipe. You've got to at least try these ideas. I don't mind it. I know it's a little smudgy, but it's a really nice shape. And I'm liking the feel of it. It's definitely more ocean feeling than 
uh, what I thought I was going to do. But, you know, we've got to go with the moment, right? Going with the moment. What are we doing up here? I think we need some silver. Oh, you know what we need? <laughs> we need some of that beautiful Agura lace. I'm telling you, we do. I'm getting it out. Uh, then New Zealand culture is very fibrous in the arts, uh, big into fiber arts, big into natural fibers, the harakiki, which comes from the um, New Zealand flax, gets made into all sorts of beautiful fibrous um, materials and papers and crafts and arts. And originally, of course, it was all in the weaving I think we need some fibrous material because that really does throw back to a little bit more cultural identity there. And the beautiful uh, tuki tuki panels, which are in between the carvings in the Maori meeting houses, um, very significant weaving in the culture of Maori culture. So I think we need to bring in some of that beautiful fibrous Agura lace. I like the way this little spot of the irid, the um, interference green here is connecting with that. Yeah, we're going to get there. It's going to be okay. Don't panic. <laughs> it's nowhere what I thought I might do, but I'm liking where we're heading. It's all in the big blue yonder. There's something about the ocean that to me represents endless possibilities. And I mean, you would have had to have thought that if you got into a waka, a canoe, one of those big ones, right? But if you had gotten into one of those with your family, your food, your produce, and headed out into the ocean to find a new land and a new start, I mean, you've got to be pretty brave, man. Seriously. A lot of these oceanic people groups that are in the Pacific, the islands, they're all connected, they're all related, I'm telling you. And to step out and just do that, there's something incredibly courageous about that. So to me, the ocean is a endless possibilities. And you know, that's a good way. It's a good way we can do today. Endless possibilities. Because I'm telling you, you don't know what's around that corner or who's going to jump up and go, surprise! <laughs> so I pulled out a bit of the Agura lace from out of my... A box over there and we'll see how that looks we won't be able to tell but until it's dried and then I might put a little bit of paint on it I can't see why you couldn't right it's just a matter of continuously working on something until you're happy that's what it's about that's what I do I just keep at it until I'm like yeah there it is that's what I was trying to make at the moment, I'm still not so sure. Yeah, that's looking pretty cool. I like that. I was going to paint it, but I don't think I will. It's pretty nice like that. Although I'm still tempted to throw some silver pearl. Yeah, you know, I'm going to have to do that. Okay, so this is the FW Pearlescent Silver Pearl. It's exactly the same ink as what I was putting in the tissue, except this one is silver. So I'm thinking just a little bit across the page could be fun. Drop the ink on, spray it with some water and see how that looks. Remember, it can only not work. It's <laughs> the worst thing that can happen. <laughs> What's the worst thing that can happen? I'm spraying it with water just to get movement of the ink so it doesn't sit in a blob. I could have waited till the paper dried. That would have been better. But, you know, I'm not a patient person. Right, now I'm going to have to let it dry. And then we'll see how it comes up once it's dried. Because everything's wet. It's got matte medium on it. It's got ink on it. Right, leave it alone, leave it alone. We'll let it dry and see how it looks. And then we'll decide what we're going to do from there. 
So I want to do something with one of these circles, but I'm just not sure what I want. I don't want to stick that on. Meh, that, meh, that's not working. So I think while I'm waiting for this to dry, being the patient person that I am, I might just move it up there. Um, I'm thinking about painting this one that I used. I used this to stamp the colour on to take a print after I had used it on the gel plate. Look at it. Fabulous paper. Absolutely fabulous. Um, I'm thinking I might just have a little play with putting some colours on that because um, I'm liking the circle, the kuru idea. I just haven't yet found how I want that to look. So I'm going to have a little fiddle with this and see if I can come up with something that makes me happy. And that's got to dry anyway. I've got more of the interference green on here. That could look good. Now I'm spraying right outside the circle, so it probably will go everywhere, but that's okay because I'm not sure what I want. So when you're not sure what you want, you can't really get it wrong, can you? <laughs> I'm just going to drop some more of these beautiful inks in, see how they move, see how they spread. These are the same colors that it, that's in the beautiful tissue, so it'll all match really well. You don't know what you want really until you push it too far and then you go hmm maybe not that <laughs> oh i like that idea see that's how you're gonna do it yeah i like that idea let's go do that over here that's the interference ink of course reacting with the beautiful dark background yeah, that's looking cool. See, you just got to stretch past the boundaries of what's comfortable. Try things. Yeah, I think I'll leave that now because that's looking pretty nice. And it might be too big for my page, but I can always cut it down. Righto, everything's drying. We'll have to come back and see how it all looks when it's dried. So yay, my beautiful uh, painted paper has all dried up and it's looking pretty darn beautiful. So let's pull that back down there. And uh, this is all dried up nice. The Agura lace is dried. I remember I dropped in some silver ink on there. That was still wet with paint, so it's kind of smudged it in, which is nice. It looks, looks pretty nice and I'm uh, pretty happy with it. Uh, not sure how I got to this place, but <laughs> I should have been paying more attention. That's all I'm going to say. So I'm going to put one of these beautiful circles onto the page. Which one? Left or right? Left or right? <laughs> I don't know. They're both pretty beautiful. So I'll put one of them on. I think two is going to be too much. So I'll put that one on or that one or there. 
<laughs> oh man, I tell you, I'm putting one on. I think I might put this one on. So let's start with this. It's a pretty nice paper, this one. I painted up really nice. Remember, I was going to put that on, but I don't know, man. I think it's the colours. They're just beautiful, and I think I just had to have them. So I'm still not sure what I'm doing with this collage. <laughs> I know, I've said that all the way along. Do I want this? I really love this shape. You know what I love about this shape? I know it's, um, it is also connected with the kuru, this shape, but this particular circular spiral like that is also um, symbolic in Māori art for the light of day and when the light broke through the darkness, which is another whole story on creation. Fabulous story. We might do that another day. Anyway, that whole unfolding there of the spiral is also that illumination. I like that. Liking some illumination. Uh, so that's also what's in this paper here. It represents the kuru and the new life, new beginnings, hope, and illumination. I mean, we can't fail, can we? We can't go wrong with these beautiful symbols. And what I learned and what I really love about Māori art and culture is that um, the ancestors or the, you know, the traditional Māori art wasn't something separate from life. You know how like Western culture art is like, ooh, art, you know, and craft is like, meh, craft. But for Māori traditions, art is a part of life everyday life it's not separated between what's art and what's craft it's not that western mentality so the weaving would be creating the baskets that you put the food in or the bags that you carry or the mats that you sleep on but the weaving is beautiful and the weaving is artwork and then the carving is the uh, tools that you use or the weapons that you make or you know and also is the carving is in the beautiful sculptural pieces that fill the meeting houses that represent the ancestors. It's all about telling the stories of life and death and ancestry. And uh, it's not separated from your everyday. So art is just an integral part of the culture, which I so get. And it's all meaningful. All the symbols have a meaning. Everything's really deep. And I, <laughs> and I so get that. And I so loved it. When I came home and I, I did a year up at, at Massey at uni on Māori art. And I'm like, man, I so get this. Because I get it in such a deep level that I always felt really out of place. about. Look at that. I'm liking that one. Let's go with that one. Okay. Up, down, in the middle, in the middle, there. So I love that about Māori art. I love that it's deep, it's intense, it's meaningful, it's all symbolic. So I've got this fibrous paper in there because the fibres are very part, very tactile part of Māori culture. And the paintings of the kawhiwhai that decorate beautiful things and it's also in the significance of um, the stories of the ancestors in the meeting house. And it's just glorious. It's all very fabulous. I love it. Absolutely love it. So I'm going to put that right there. Do I want the other one? Because that one looks really good. Is that too much? Too much? Uh, you're right. I know. It's too much. <laughs> what about this one? Uh, nah, not feeling it. Not feeling it. So I love that about uh, the significance of everything. Everything. Because um, my mum used to tease about tease me about that all the time. Are oh, you so intense? Why is your art always so intense? And then I came home and I'm like, yeah, that's why. Because I think when you can connect somewhere and when you can find your identity in people, place, and you know history and ancestry, you suddenly go, oh, I actually know why I am the way I am, not just who I am, but why I am. And I think that is very empowering because if you can 
like yourself. Um, knowing yourself is one step, but if you can like yourself and who you are, it's incredibly liberating. To me, there's a real sense of freedom in just being okay in your own skin. And this is me. I'm all this and that's okay. And that's really, that's all there is to it. So I think that it is very empowering to know um, who you are and why you are as well. So I'm liking that. I think I'm going to put that there. Look, I'm not liking the round one for this side. I think it's just all too same, same. I don't like same, same. But And I'm also missing a bit of purple. So I'm thinking that we need some purple because, look, clearly the power's got purple and I haven't got any purple. So I think I might stick that on first and then I'm going to bring in some purple somewhere. I'm going to rummage through my drawers and find something to put here that's going to make me happy. Okay, so when I came home and met Brownie, uh, my brother who took me up north and uh, explained to me our ancestors and our land and took me around and showed me where our family is, um, he gave me this. He took it off his neck and he gave it to me and he had carved it from the mother of pearl shell. Carving's very big, multiculture, very strong carving. And he this these are of course the kuru again, but they also represent the waves. And he said for him this represented the waves that would splash on the um bow of the waka when our ancestors reached the shores of New Zealand. So being that part of the journey and hearing my story and coming home, he gave this to me as a celebration of finding where I come from, but also that that venture and that journey. So that's pretty cool. It's a treasure to me or a tonga. Um, I will treasure this all my life. I also did a few paintings with the symbol and these shapes designed. So in saying that, at the cheap shop, because <laughs> uh, I picked this up, which is like, you know, a tacky touristy trinket. It's supposed, supposed to be something like the beautiful carvings, <laughs> but it's not. But look how flat that is. I mean, hello, that's awesome. So I picked this up specifically to take prints with. So I'm going to play with that. I'm going to play with this to take some prints. I'm going to glue that on there and then we're going to see where we're at. Okay, a bit of a bit of matte medium and away we go. I might put it right there. I think that'll be okay. Beautiful. Bit of matte medium on the edge. And we're all good. That dried up pretty nice. Ta-da! I'm liking that. Beautiful. I love it. Now I'm going to bring in a bit of the purple. And I've got some Lumiere Halo Violet Gold. Oh my gosh, this paint is amazing. And it is very power. Look at that. Look at that. It is just flipping glorious. So let's look at the purples here. Yeah. Hello. That's matching right there. I just love these colors. So what are we going to do? Well, I might put a tiny bit on here because, you know, it hasn't got any purple in my beautiful power color. And it, I'm pretty sure it needs to have. Just a little bit, just a little bit. What I love about these Lumiere colors is they release the color. So it's a halo violet gold. So it releases incredible purpley violet color when you spray it with water. Amazing paint, amazing paint. You seriously need some of this in your life. If you are in New Zealand, I get it from the warehouse stationery. Hello, it's so easy. It's a five minute walk for me. I know, I know I got it good. I tell you, I got it good. That, look at that. That's beautiful. Yes, just a tiny bit of purple. We need more. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try printing with this. 
this is a pretty cool shape. And seeing as this kuru is our theme for the collage, then this could work. Cheap shops, man. Seriously, I bought this for two bucks. Two bucks. Good thing bargain. So you've got to keep your eye out in those dollar stores for anything that you want to print with that is an interesting shape that has a flat surface so it will print easy. Righto, righto, righto. Let's try that. We'll put it right there. I want to put a few on there. Oh, man. <laughs> that didn't work like I wanted it to work. Ah, you stink. You stink. I'm going to try again. Can only not work, right? That's what I keep telling you. It can just only not work. If that's the worst thing that can happen, meh, it'll be all right. Let's try again. This time, this time. Ta-da! Well, it's not brilliant, but it's, it's on its way to brilliant. So we could just give it a little touch up. We'll just give it a little help and then it will be brilliant. Just needs a couple of bits. I think what I should do is perhaps put some gel medium with the paint because clearly it's too thin to take a very good print. But the colour's looking fab, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to get some gel medium. So bit of heavy gel gloss, give it a bit more strength, might take a better print. Do you think I should rub that one off? Mm, maybe I should. Maybe we should start again. No, maybe I'll leave it, it looks alright. <laughs> I was going to rub it off, but what the heck, we'll leave it. We'll see what the next one prints like, and if it's better, we'll rub that one off. So you just got to have courage. You can fix things. Don't stress out too much. If it doesn't work, you just come up with the next brilliant idea and fix it. Alright, so now I've got some heavy gel gloss in with my paint. And let's see if that prints better. Righto. Bit better coverage with the heavy gel gloss on that. Try again. Try not to drop it. Always good. It's a bit slippery. Let's try like there. See if that prints a bit better. Ta-da! Yeah, it's it's still not like you know amazing, but I, I think I can live with it. It'll be okay. I don't mind the texture. The texture's pretty cool. I don't mind that it's not perfect. I don't mind the broken colour. It's kind of cool too. So, you know, just give it a little touch up. I like the way it looked the other one after I sprayed it. <laughs> Let's just spray that again. Righto, well, you know, we're committed now. We've got to follow through. I like the colour. The texture's great. So, we may as well finish. Finish what we started. Oh man, I'm getting worse. <laughs> oh man, I might have just paint the flame of thing in. <laughs> Seriously. You see, you gotta start with these brilliant ideas, they don't always work. But you've got to at least try.
It's a bit smudgy, but it's okay. Loving the colour. Loving the shape. That's working for me. on there they're pretty cool I'm loving that I'm loving the pattern of them the shape of them. the color looks good the purple is looking really nice on there uh, that stuck down good um so I'm loving it I think it's great is there anything else that we want to add you know I just do I just do I just want to add some silver and I want to, I don't know why, but I just want to drip this down here. That's just what I'm feeling like I want to do. I just want some vertical lines coming down that way. In the silver. Hold the phone caller. I might wreck it. <laughs> but that's just what i'm wanting to do is put some silver down there oh i like that i like that i like that i just wanted to connect it more with the bottom bit to the top i think i think that's what i wanted to do Let's give it a bit more connection Oh, yeah, that's working. Oh, I love it when it works. Because, <laughs> you know, you know, it doesn't always. <laughs> you know, it was a risk, but I think we're okay. I'm really liking it. It'll dry more metallic because it is the silver. Did you notice I extended the um, stencil to the edge of the page? I just can't handle not covering the whole thing. I've so tried. I've looked at other artists' work that do bits on the page and then they leave areas wide and blank and I just can't do it. I look at it and go, I'm going to do that. And then I try and do it and I just can't do it. I extended the stencil right to the edge because I just had to. It was going to irritate me if I didn't. And I'm pretty happy with how it looks. I just wanted to add that silver coming down to connect from the sky down to the bottom of the page because you know it does look like the sky i mean that could be the long white cloud which is what aotearoa new zealand means the land of the long white cloud i'm happy looks nice some beautiful color good shape good meaning love me <laughs> that looks really nice now i like that section this is looking good. See, you can put it on, you can wipe it off again. If you wipe it off straight away, it'll come off. So don't be afraid to try things. Just put it on. If you don't like it, wipe it off. Yes, you know, not hard people. Now this is okay. They're a bit stiff, but they're okay. Uh, this now is looking a bit too standing out. So maybe I might throw some inks on that. <laughs> I know, you can see how this goes, can't you? It just gets so carried away. Let me see, what have I got? I'm just going to put just a little bit of the beautiful galactic blue on there because I just want to blend that in a bit more. Oh, yes, that was a good idea. Yes! Look at that. This is just water in a little spray bottle, in case you're wondering. Oh, that is just glorious. Man, I love these colours. Man, I just love colour. <laughs> I love <laughs> I love all the colours that I use. Oh, that's beautiful. Just stop it now. Just leave it alone. That is just 
beautiful. So that's the galactic blue that's in the paper already. So, you know, I'm just repeating colors that we already have in the composition and that really helps to unify areas. I love that. Now that looks like, definitely looks like you're in the water. That is very watery feel now. Tiny bit there. And you know, the fact that I'm spraying it with water <laughs> helps it to feel like it's a watery feel. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> yes, beautiful. Okay, I'm happy with that now. It's more blended in. Um, I'm loving the shades of color and the shape, the symbolism, oh, the beauty. <laughs> now you have a little bit more understanding of Maori culture. And, you know, you might come visit me. It'd be awesome. Do I want some silver up here? Maybe I do. They're a bit stiff, aren't they? Mm. Yes, it's beautiful. It makes me happy. The colors are glorious. The shapes are significant. And it's all about new life and new hope and the journey. And right now, we could do with all a bit of that. A bit of life and hope and a bit of illumination. Yes. Oh, I just thought of one more thing we could do. <laughs> just one more. Just one more. Before I do that, I'm just going to have to. I have to. They're just a bit stiff. <laughs> just a bit stiff. <laughs> they need to lighten up, man. <laughs> Relax a little. <laughs> Get a little bit of movement going on, man. It's a bit too serious. <laughs> Life's too serious to be that serious. Jeez. I know. Sorry, had to loosen them up. They were just a bit too stiff. You know, if you're going to get an art journal, make sure you get a one with good, solid, you know, mixed media pages. Because as you can see, I like to give it heaps. But this, this one handles it well. You know, I also do these kind of paintings on canvas. Yeah, that's much better. See, they're not so stiff now. Righto, this is one more thing I want to do. So the ancient Maori, like, you know, before Captain Cook charged the board, didn't actually have a written language. Um, and art was used to transfer knowledge, to record, to tell stories, um, all of the arts, not just the visual arts, but, you know, songs and storytelling and carvings, all part of the culture that kept traditions alive. So, you know, I love that, that aspect about the arts being so ingrained in just your whole life. So I've got, I have to add one more thing, right? So on the way to Greytown is Power World. I know. Did you know such a place existed? I didn't. I, and I had to go. It'd be wrong not to. So, of course, when I went to Power World, I did buy a few packets of beautiful, amazing power. So now I'm wanting to put a piece right here. It's still wet. Hello. Right in the middle there. In the middle of our um, illumination. Because here is like when the light is separated from the darkness and the birth of the new day. Yes, we need a piece of power right in the middle. The um, carvings that Māori used to do for the beautiful meeting houses um, always had power for the eyes. Because the ancestors had to see. And it was beautiful significance of illumination. So we're going to have to put a piece right there. I just got to find the right piece and it is still wet because, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't want to wait for it to dry. <laughs> I just need one bit, just one bit. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's power world. If you come visit me, I'll take you. <laughs> it is an hour and a half drive, but you know, oh man, just tip them all out. I do have quite a few bags of power. I love it, did I mention? <laughs> oh, that one. Come on, we've got to find a winner. That is. This one, that's just so beautiful, I actually can't decide. That's the problem. They are just all so beautiful. 
That's a pretty nice piece. What do you think? That one? Yeah, I like that one. Oh, that one's pretty nice too. No, stop looking. Stop it. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll pull out the other three bags. <laughs> no, we have to have a little piece of power on there because the whole thing started with the beautiful power colors and this magnificent stencil. Thank you, PM Artist Studio, for taking me down this memory lane. Um, I hope you've been okay with the stories. I know it's a little intense and a bit much and very personal. But that's just how it came out today as we're creating art in the studio. Um, I do create like that. I get inspired by something and then I fully go off on it too much. <laughs> yeah, stop it. Because I fully go off on a tangent and it started with the stencil, then it went to the power and then it was the whole um, story home and then it was into em embracing the arts and the illumination of the new day and the journey. So I think I'm going to stop there. I'm absolutely loving it. I'm really happy with how it all come together. I had no idea it was going to go in this direction or that I was going to share so much of my story with you. Hope you're okay with that. Uh, too late. It's happened. <laughs> it's out there now. I already told you. <laughs> um, I'm loving sharing uh, this aspect of who I am with you. So I hope you're all, all right. Um, hearing it really basically <laughs> yeah i didn't get too nitty-gritty so we're okay we're still okay um next week i'm gonna go i'm gonna take a trip through the week out to um martin where their guy a guy there harvests the harakiki which is the uh, new zealand flax and he creates handmade paper so i'm gonna go for a trip out there and next week we're gonna look at that new zealand um harakiki and have a look at that paper i'll bring home some and we'll have a little play and see what that's like and that'll be really fun too so i hope you enjoy the rest of your day thanks for hanging out in the studio thanks for being part of my world uh give me a shout out if um you know you connected with anything anything that you want to know about my story i'll put in the links there's a story on my blog if you want to know some more about that um, if you want to know about the colored tissue and how to do that, I'll put the link there to the other YouTube video and also the interference paints. I've got another whole video on that. I'll put that link there too. And thanks so much. And I hope you join me again next week. Pacific shoreline And I'll go anywhere If you'll be by my side It's alright We'll leave everything behind And I'll say Follow me to the unknown We'll take the back roads they don't know Let's get lost One tank of gas Don't need a map Drive too fast, you're my North Star, you're my home, doesn't matter where we go, follow me to the unknown, follow me to the unknown. I can't wait to show you what we've got for next week, so make sure you show me the love and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you then. Yeah.